Lord. Like a magician, a good filmmaker creates reality from illusions and seduces his audience into believing the unbelievable. But what would happen if a director's passion for his illusion became reality? That premise was applied to F.W. Murnau's classic vampire masterpiece, Nosferatu, by screenwriter Stephen Katz. About 10 or 11 years ago, I was very interested in Nosferatu, and I'd always been really interested in the fact that the film looks incredibly realistic to the point that you almost think you're watching a, a, an actual documentary about a vampire. So I got the idea of, of uh, what would happen if the actor who played a vampire in the movie was really a vampire. And the result is the Lionsgate film, Shadow of the Vampire. And end. Filmmakers have always been attracted to do films about filmmaking. Um, this is a very good one for that. The job of recreating Murnau's rodent face Count Orlock was a role that was written expressly for Academy Award nominee Willem Dafoe. But I used to see him at the performing garage in New York, and he was the one I wanted to play the vampire. He just had this, this, this quality of a mixture of, of incredible frightening threateningness and, and an incredible erotic charge, too, that I thought was perfect for the part. It's a great character. It's, it's great melodrama. It has a great sweep. He's uh, such a noble huge, uh, you know, tr tragic, romantic figure. Award-winning actor John Malkovich was captivated by the idea of playing Murnau as a director so consumed by his art that he would stop at nothing to get his vision on film. Watch your finger! Look, no Nosferatu, blood! Blood! I think it is very original. Uh, I liked the script uh, immediately upon reading it, and I committed to do it immediately. Action. The idea that Murnau cast a real vampire as the star of Nosferatu completely captured the imagination and creative spirit of Shadow of the Vampire director Elias Marriage. What was really amazing about the script, and what was really exciting about it, is that the script was telling a story that was deconstructing the mythology behind the making of Nosferatu. How dare you destroy my photographer, you idiot! Did I kill some of your people, Marno? I can't remember. Why him, you monster? Why not the script girl? <laughs> the script girl. I'll eat her later. No, you will not. To achieve his goal, uh, he will do anything. And that's what we re really explore with this story, that Manau will do anything to achieve his desired goal. And that is to, whether he needs to massage someone here or, or fire someone there or, or lose a crew member, uh, it matters not to him as long as the film gets made. For co-producer Richard Johns, the secret to bringing this film to life lies in the casting. You must go in. John really is the only actor who could really passionately, believably bring this off. You want to eat the writer? Be my guest. That will leave you to explain how else your character is supposed to get to Bremen. And Willem is just fantastic as Max Schreck, so believable as Max Schreck, having the two of them together, and they've never appeared together on the screen before, creates this incredible electricity, along with fantastic other principal actors like Catherine McCormack and Eddie Azard and Udo Kier and Kerry Elways. Um, it's a tremendous ensemble cast. We have most of these actors throughout most of our film because we're telling the story of Manau's crew and his producer and his writer and his stars. Henrik, would you take my dog for me? She's so over the top, she's such a diva, that I wallow in, in playing her. Visma, is there anything here that even vaguely resembles a cabaret? I mean, I'm suffering for my art, Alvin, believe me. It's wonderful to walk in and tell everyone that they're doing things wrong and, and people should be paying attention to you. I mean, it's because it's so out of reality, out of your scope of reality. Melodrama, I mean, what's going on here anyway? You know, Friedrich tells me to lock my door at night, and Gustav says everybody's vanishing. Oh, and 
and you can imagine what they're saying in Berlin. <gasps> I had to research how to be a bad actor in a bad wig. I, I might have underplayed it a bit um, because uh, Gustav von Wegenheim in the actual Nosferatu had some big old acting, ding, he had some of these kind of movements which uh, seem very over the top now. And I don't know back in the 20s, because he was a B actor. He was not their main choice. He wasn't the top 10 of the acting things. He wasn't the Bob De Niro of his time. And, uh, and no one goes, oh, let's go and see a Gustav von Wengenheim film. God, let's put that old film. What is he in? Whenever you do a movie, it's an adventure. It's a group of people working for this common goal. Your job is always different. I can honestly say this is really a fun shoot.